It is a truth universally acknowledged that fast fashion sucks. Now I am not judging you if you buy fast fashion, I just personally don't like it. And there are many reasons why plenty of socially conscious people may be forced into buying fast fashion in order to clothe themselves. What do we want? Sustainable fashion! Why can't we have it? We're broke! I know why these jeans are 200 pounds and I accept that and I even approve of this price tag because I know how much work has gone into them, but I just don't have that money in the bank. Doesn't matter how long it's gonna last me, I simply can't afford them. And this is the reality for a lot of people. I'm sure we would all love to fill our wardrobes with clothing that was woven from recycled cucumber skins and stitched under the light of the full moon, but that takes cash, a luxury of which many of us are not in possession right now. You could go to a charity shop, you can find some absolute gems in charity shops and thrift stores, except all non-essential businesses are closed in England right now, so that's not an option for me. So how else can you feed your socially conditioned clothing habit and still satisfy your inner earth goddess? Upcycling. I have a pair of dungarees that I just don't wear. I really like the idea of them, but they just don't seem to leap out of my wardrobe at me when I go and look for something to wear. <laughs> Somebody can see me talking to myself. <laughs> However, after watching copious Rachel Maxi videos, I have a hankering for a heckin' cute pinafore skirt. And I'm gonna make one. Part of the reason I don't really like the dungarees is because I don't think the colour particularly suits me. I think it's a really nice colour, I just don't seem to work well with dark blues. So we are gonna dye this a beautiful forest green. We are gonna cut it up and then restitch it into a pinafore skirt. Hopefully. So hopefully by the end of this you will be inspired to cut up all your clothes and Frankenstein them into something you will actually wear. Let's do this. The first thing I'm doing is trying my best to remove some of that bright blue colour, so that the dyed colour will be as strong as possible. I'm also chucking in some old pink linen bedsheets that suffered an unfortunate yellow stain at the hands of my clumsiness and a bowl of super noodles. I'm hoping to remove the dye from them so that I can have a large amount of white linen for future historical projects. I'm using this Dylon pre-dye which promises to remove existing colour from the fabric, which it does to some extent. The blue colour is definitely lighter, but all that dye has to go somewhere, and I suppose the most attractive option was right onto my newly whitened linen sheets. I still haven't gotten the colour out, and I can't believe I didn't see this coming. So then I'm using some Dylon Forest Green Machine Dye to turn that fabric the colour we want it. The dungarees are 100% organic cotton, so they should take the dye beautifully. The thread has not taken the dye, which suggests it's polyester. Be aware if you're dyeing something with a large amount of visible stitching that the fibre content of the thread used may not be included on the label. I told my very arty and fashionable friend about this, and she said it must look super edgy. So it's not an oversight, it's edgy. Time to rip apart those seams and see what we're working with. Right, so I've unpicked the two long side seams. So we've now got this weird, like four pointed thing going on here with the front and the back and then the two legs. I've also taken the straps off and these are just going to be the straps of the actual thing. So that's not gonna change. In terms of the front, I'm gonna cut this down here like that and then cut it off just below this pocket and then for the skirt it's going to be a little bit more patchwork this is the back and then this is the back of one of the legs and this whole thing here with all the seam allowances is 40 inches however we need a waistband and this fabric is stretchy in this direction but not in this direction. So I want the waistband to be going along this way. So this whole back section is 19 and a half inches. I've worked out that if I cut out two, two inch strips here, so five inches along in total, like that, I can then put those two together end to end to make a single faced 
waistband and then with the remaining 35 inches that is going to more or less get cut straight in half at the 17 and a half inch bit so that this will be a panel for the skirt here the same thing on the other leg and then we're gonna have to do a panel that goes across like this ignore this crotch bit and then do the same thing on the other side so essentially we're going to be using almost all of the fabric the only bits we're not going to be using is this sort of region around the crotch where the seams start to curve and it starts to get a bit awkward and then if we went five inches below there that's probably enough so that we could get two panels again and this time include the pockets but we're going to have to see how that goes i'm going to see how much width we've got what the shape of the skirt is once we've cut out those panels that i mentioned before and then see where we're at <laughs> number one arises due to the fact that the leftover fabric from the front is too short, by a good half an inch or more. This is okay, we can get a long enough piece if we cut diagonally and remove and reposition the pockets. Problem number two arises because I probably should have cut out and prepared all of my panels before dyeing the fabric. There's nothing for it. We'll have to cut the panel straight down and make the skirt criminally short. We'll be stitching the two thigh pieces to one of the leg pieces for the front of the skirt and the two back pieces to the other leg piece for the back of the skirt. So we'll pin all these seams but we'll leave the side seams open for now so we have two flat panels. I have a wonderful new sewing machine! <laughs> My old one has served me well, but I've had it for about 13 years and it's starting to get a bit tired. Now, as you can see, on the original seams of the dungarees, they've been finished with an overlocker which is kind of like a sewing machine but it specifically does this kind of stitch which just stops the seam allowance fraying and since i'm not doing a lining for this it's going to be important to finish those seams now because this is already overlocked i kind of want to do the same for mine now i don't have an overlocker but one of the reasons i wanted a new machine was because this machine that i bought has an overlock stitch so let's try that out An actual overlocker will normally trim that excess bit of fabric, 
but there's not too much there so I'm going to leave it be. And we mustn't forget to restitch that patch pocket that we partially unpicked earlier. While the front and back of the skirt are flat and unattached, we'll press all those seams. We have to be especially careful pressing on the right side of the fabric, as the corduroy is velvety, so it's at risk of being crushed if we get too hot and heavy with the iron. In fact, I would recommend never getting hot and heavy with an iron. I have these really cute buttons that I want to put on either side of the skirt, so we'll keep the waistband in two pieces. I want each piece to overlap by two inches on each side where the buttons will be, and we'll need to allow for half an inch of seam allowance on each side of both panels. Given that I have a waist measurement of 31 inches, and this is a stretch fabric, so we won't need to worry about ease, I need each panel to be 18 and a half inches, I think. In order to fit the wide skirt onto the waistband, we need to gather down the skirt panels. I'm using a running stitch and some extra strong thread for this. Now we fumble our way through the fiddly process of pulling the gathering threads to just the right length, evenly distributing the gathers, pinning to the waistband, and stitching down with a stretch stitch, another feature of my new toy. We need to stitch those side seams, making sure to leave a slit at the top to allow for overlap when we fasten the buttons. I am leaving about 6 inches open. Now it's time to get to work on the bib. First of all, those raw side edges need folding over, pinning and top stitching. We then lay the bib and the skirt right sides together, lining up the bottom edge of the bib with the top edge of the front waistband making sure to keep the centre front seams aligned. By the way, does anyone know what this symbol means? Is the world going to explode if I peel it off and forget it ever existed? 
I'm using that stretch stitch again to sew the bib to the waistband because we've got to leave room for the nightly snack expansion, know what I mean? I'm overlocking the edge before folding and top stitching the top of the waistband. So I have this one bit and it's where I've just like slipped with my top stitching I think because this bit was really chunky because it's like several folds of fabric um, and it means this bit of top stitching is a little bit wonky um, and I really don't know if I can be bothered to fix it. <laughs> uh, it's the kind of thing that if I wanted to fix it at a later date I can but for now I'm going to pretend it never happened and that's totally okay. This, however, is a more pressing issue. Oh, I might not make it. We'll see, I've only got a tiny bit of top stitching left. If I need to either wait to do the rest of the overlocking, I can, or I can just do that in another color thread because you can't see the overlocking because it's on the inside. To tidy up those side splits, I've folded and pinned the raw edges down, ready for top stitching. Got that much left to do. <laughs> and that much thread left. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna do it. Oh my god, yes, I did it. <laughs> I literally emptied the spool. This is what's left. I just finished that top stitching. I've still got the straps to attach. Um, I've just pinned them on for now. This is how they were attached to the back panel before. So yeah, th this was just folded over. I think I might actually do this by hand because this is so chunky and my poor new machine has done valiant work but I just don't want to chance it and I think I am just going to do this top stitching by hand when I have more thread, <laughs> which will hopefully be tomorrow. This is all lies as I found some more thread in my stash. It's not the exact right colour but it'll do. I'm going to use this extra strong thread and a back stitch to attach the straps to the bib. After doing some tests on a scrap piece of the fabric, I've worked out that a 3 quarter inch buttonhole will be perfect for my inch wide buttons, so I'm going to measure and cut these in each end of the front waistband. I'm using a buttonhole stitch with doubled up thread to reinforce the slit. You take the thread under, up and around the needle, and then pull down to secure a knot over the raw edge. Bernadette Banner has a wonderful tutorial on this, which I will link below. Now, on either end of the back waistband, I'm measuring and attaching the buttons. We're almost there. Now that I'm able to do the skirt up, I can try it on and pin the straps in place where I need them on the back waistband.
So when I do a test piece on several layers of fabric, it looks like this. And when I do the actual thing on several layers of fabric, it looks like this. My machine is resolutely throwing a tantrum every time I try and sew this bit. So it may come down to more hand sewing, which is not a bad thing. Instead of stitching the strap onto the single layer of the waistband, I'm going to backstitch it to the seam allowance where the waistband and the top of the skirt meet. I don't think this is a legit technique, and the seam allowance isn't exactly going to lay very flat, but I wanted to add some extra stability and not risk putting strain on the horizontal seam here. The final step is to fold over and pin the raw edge along the hem of the skirt, and use a felling stitch to secure it. So the reason I didn't line the waistband like I probably should have done is because I thought that felling it would stop it stretching. Did I test this? No. Should I have? Yeah, probably. Turns out a felling stitch stretches just fine. Or at least for this fabric that doesn't stretch like a huge amount. Never mind. So yes, my waistband could have been a lot tidier, but really friends, Something doesn't have to be perfect to be worth making, or worth wearing. If you make a thing, you are absolutely allowed to be proud of that thing, no matter how much better it could have been with hindsight. For instance, this skirt is scandalously short. So short, in fact, that I can even wear flats with this without my legs looking like the teeny tiny stumps that they are. I can't do that with any other skirt. It definitely doesn't pass the bending over test, but it's okay. This is what squats are for. I love this dress. It is so comfy, it's really cute, I'm really glad with the colour, and I don't even care that it's got random turquoise stitching. This turned out exactly how I pictured it in my mind, except a little shorter maybe, and I am so thrilled. <laughs> I'm so glad I was able to salvage the pocket panels from the front, because not only does it mean I used more of the material, but it means I've got handy pockets. I've now got three pockets in this thing, and this top pocket, Literally the perfect size for my phone. Bit terrifying when I've lost my phone because I don't think to check my boobs for it, but you know, I'll learn. So first things I like about it, apart from, you know, how stinking cute it is, I love that I was really careful to do stretch stitching around the waistband because your girl loves a big meal. Your girl loves a big meal and copious snacks of an evening. And so many times before when I have been wearing skirts or like tight trousers, I've had to like literally just take them off for the evening. And that isn't always an option, especially now things start to open up again and we're gonna go out to restaurants. You can't always strip like post meal. I mean, if you got the confidence to do it, more power to you, but mm, I'm not quite there yet. I think the buttons are really cute and this was actually a last minute decision because when I was planning it in my head, I was just gonna have an elasticated waistband. But then I found these buttons and I was gonna put them up here to attach these bits to but I think they look really good where they are. And I love that they look like they've just been like cut off a twig. That really makes me happy. Potentially things to do in the future, maybe to like line this waistband because it is just the single layer of fabric and you can kind of see it wants to bunch up here um, because it just hasn't really got any strength. And that's okay, but ideally I'd like it to um, look pristine. Another thing I kind of realized was I don't actually like doing the whole thing by machine. There was one moment where I was, I realized that I was taking like five shots in a row of just me running fabric through the machine. And I thought, well, A, this isn't particularly interesting content and B, I'm not like actively having fun here. Whereas when I'm getting in there with the hand sewing, even if it's just felling, I really like that. It, it's tactile. It's like, it's the part of crafts that I like, you know, it's doing stuff with my hands rather than just ah, through the machine, you know? It also does, you probably can't see it against the black. Oh, <laughs> scandal. Yeah, so it's a little bit like wobbly here. It doesn't quite sit flat, but considering this is just 
a straight panel that I've cut from dungarees that I've had for a while. I think that's probably just because these have like stretched in the wash and stuff like that. Otherwise, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I would thoroughly recommend Frankensteining your clothes because it was a lot of fun. It was so satisfying when I managed to get all of the panels that I needed out of the fabric. And I think dungarees to dress is quite an easy one. You will probably end up with not quite as much fabric as you expected <laughs> to go around the skirt, but if you're okay with criminally short skirts that you can't bend down in, it's cool. It just means you have to practice your squats. We should all do more squats, right? Thank you for following this process. I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're inspired to go off and create and do fun things. I'm gonna go and I am gonna be wearing this for like the next week solidly. Does anyone else do that when they get new things? If you would like to see more from me, please consider subscribing and I will see you next time.